wood lathe project. It's made up of a headstock, motor, carriage assembly, tailstock, and the bed. The lathe supports workpiece of up to 8 inches in diameter and about 18 inches in length. I tried to make the mini lathe design as small and lightweight as possible without making it overly complicated to build. Also, the objective was to design it inexpensively to see if I like using wood lathes. The project cost me about $20 for the bearings and the hardware, since all the wood used in the project is scrap and the motor used is shared with my drill press. It only takes about 5 minutes to swap the motor back and forth between the lathe and the drill press. The bed is cut from a scrap piece of 2x6 fur that is screwed down on each of the four corners to the workbench. And because of the design of the bed, it's pretty easy to add an accessory that will extend the length of the bed for when you want to run the longer work pieces. Both the tailstock and the headstock use two inexpensive flange bearings. They are mounted with four bolts to the wooden frame. Half inch diameter rod is used for the axles. The inside flange constrains rotational movement of the workpiece, and then the outside flange constrains side to side movement of the workpiece. The position of the headstock and tailstock axles can be adjusted by moving the flange bearing position so that both axles are properly aligned. Axles on both the headstock and the tailstock are sharpened to a point and those fit into some pre-drilled holes on the workpiece to help lock it into place. The tailstock uses a live center, meaning that the axle rotates along with the workpiece. This is why there's two flange bearings in the tailstock. A dead center tailstock is easier to make, but doesn't rotate, so there will be a constant friction force between the workpiece and the dead center. To tighten up the live center, first thing to do is get the tailstock slid over so that it engages with the workpiece, and then tighten up the nut knob down at the bottom of the tailstock. And then what you do is you tighten up this nut right here, this guy right here. And what that will do is it will drive this axle that way and tighten it up. Now you're probably going to have to use a wrench to do, to do this. Get it nice and tight. Just twist it that way and it tightens it right up. So once you get that nut tight, then you'll come back and, and tighten these other nuts, the two on this side and the two on this side so that they're really securely holding against the, this uh, outer flange bearing right here. The assembly is for supporting the chisels when you run in the lathe. There's two nut knobs, one right here, that's for side to side movement of the carriage, and one right here, which is for both pivoting of the carriage and up down movement of the carriage. So there's quite a bit of flexibility in how you can position the carriage. Like say, if you wanted to turn a bowl, you'd have something maybe like around this type of orientation. The bottom of the carriage is made of solid oak which makes this thing very strong. When it's clamped down, it's not gonna move anywhere. There's a one and a half inch wide by one eighth inch thick steel bar that's screwed into the carriage here that protects the carriage from damage caused by wood chisels, if for example, they were to catch against the workpiece. The headstock axle currently uses a spur center, which is just a half inch coupler nut that has the end ground down to points with the Dremel tool and those guys bite into the workpiece and lock it into place. The spur center just screws onto the axle of the headstock like this and then it will bottom out on the, on the inside flange bearing. In the future I'm going to be making different mounting methods such as a faceplate chucks for both the headstock and the tailstock and I'm also going to try to make a duplicator carriage assembly. 
The headstock is enclosed except for this area in the back. This is in case the drive belt breaks or comes loose. Same as with the tailstock, there's a nut knob that secures the headstock to the bed, and then there's also the two flange bearings. As a note, the headstock can, be, can slide back and forth just like the tailstock, and it can even be rotated 180 degrees, if for example later, turning a larger diameter workpiece off the edge of the workbench. There's a single plywood pulley for the drive belt, and there's no other adjustments needed for the headstock. This is a two-thirds horsepower motor that has 1700 RPMs, so it has plenty of power and it's not going to overheat like might be the case for some smaller motors like or, or even a hand drill. There are several pulley settings. On the smallest pulley setting I can get about 800 RPM at the workpiece all the way up to the big pulley setting which is about 2500 RPM at the workpiece. I didn't want to wear out the, the, pull, the drive belt from my drill press, so I got another drive belt at a garage sale for about a dollar, but I really don't, didn't have control over what the outside diameter is, is for the belt. So I had to locate the motor on its own platform, rather than ideally mounting it directly to the headstock. So this that's this mount right here. and. The mount itself screws down to the workbench and there's some bolts on there that I can slide the motor side to side for the case of where I want to set up these different pulleys. And then there's also sliding it this way as well and that's for tensioning the belt. This is the on off switch right here. And so that part, the motor and the AC cable are all one assembly that comes off of the, the drill press. Call, all comes off together, so it makes it real easy to, to use it for this lathe or, or swap it back onto the drill press. Let me know if there's any questions or improvements for this project. And if you like the video, feel free to like and subscribe to my channel for more.